Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to extract files from a SharePoint Online with Data Factory and we will finish loading the data into a data lake. The first thing that I would like to do is to explain the whole process so that you can understand all the involved parts. In fact, most of the configurations that we are going to explain in this video are not Data Factory related are more related to Azure Active Directory or to SharePoint Online so that you can help the IT departments of your company to set them up. So let's go to see the process. The first thing that we need to do is to register an application in the Azure Active Directory to be used as a service account for our process. The second step will be to grant the application ID access to the SharePoint Online site. Once that we have that, we are ready to move to the step three and start creating the Data Factory pipeline. There, we will configure a web activity to get a token and a second activity to copy the data from the SharePoint to the data lake. I have pasted in the description of this video some links that help me on this process so that you can also get help from them. Let's start now with the first step. We are going to move to the Azure portal. We are going to look for the Azure Active Directory and the first thing that we need to copy is the tenant ID that is here. We are going to copy it because we will need it later. Here on the left bar in the manage area, we are going to get into the app registration. We are going to register a new one. On the name, we are going to call it a SP Access App. And for the rest of the options, we are going to keep them as they are. In our case, the SharePoint Online is in the same tenant, so with the selected option is OK. Register. And here we have the application ID. We are also going to copy it because we will need it later. And what we have to do now is to establish a secret. So here we have the certificates and secrets. Let's create a new one. I'll add a description here. I'll keep the six months period. Add. And here we have the value of the credentials to be used. Let's also copy it to use it later. With this, we have finished the configuration in the Azure Active Directory part. We are going to start now with the configuration in the SharePoint Online site. For that, we are going to open one of the links that you have in the descriptions because there's something in the instructions that was a bit confusing to me and got me several weeks fighting with my IT department. If we scroll down to this part, we have here the URL to grant access to the SharePoint. On it, we have to replace the URL of the site. If we open my SharePoint site, that is this one, I took the URL and replaced it on the text with this. And in fact, this link works and allows us to grant access, but these permissions are not inherited to all the sites of SharePoint site. Let me go back to the SharePoint home and here in my sites, I need to look for the one containing the files that we want to export. In our case, is this one, Javi site. We are going to get in it. And this is the URL that we need to use to replace. So we are going to add here slash sites slash and have a site. And with this URL, we are going again to the browser. We are going to paste here the app ID we previously copied. Click on lookup and it will automatically find the app name. For the next cells, we are going to follow the instructions recommended. So in the domain, we are going to use localhost.com in the redirect the HTTPS for localhost and in the permissions the XML script that we are copying that basically grants the application read permissions as we can see here. Now we click on create, trust it and that's it for the SharePoint site. We are now ready to go to the step 3 and to start with the data factory process creation. In the following link we can get the URL to get the token. We are going to copy it here. And we just need to replace on it the tenant ID that we previously got. We are going to the data factory. 
we are going to create a new pipeline. We are going to insert a web activity. I'm going to call it get token. And in the URL part, we are going to copy the one we created. This method should be a post. And if we look in the documentation, we should add a header with name content type and value this one. For the body, we are going to copy this string into a notepad and we are going to replace the client ID here, the tenant ID here and here, the client secret needs to be pasted here, and we need the tenant name. OK, now we are going to copy the body into the web activity. And if everything is fine, this should work. Let's debug it. OK, if we check the output, we can see that the token has been generated. The second step is to build the URL to request the file. The URL must be something like this. We need to replace the site URL with the SharePoint URL plus the site. So this one. And the relative path to the file should be the site again and the structure of folders until we get to the file name. Let's just test the link in our browser. And as you can see, a file called value has been downloaded. It has no extension, but if we open it, we can see that it contains our CSV data. The browser doesn't ask for credentials because I'm logged with those credentials. But in Data Factory, the token is going to do that part of the job. We are going back to the Data Factory. We are going to add a copy activity and connect it. And we are going to create a new linked service. It should be of type HTTP. We are going to call it SharePoint Online. Paste the base URL. Disable the certificate and set the authentication type to anonymous. It's OK, create it. Now let's go to the copy activity. In the source, let's create a new dataset. It should be HTTP type and format binary. Choose the previously created link service. And in the relative URL, we are going to paste the rest of the URL. The only pending part here is to add the header of the source. That will be a concatenation of authorization, colon, beer, space, and with the token value. That is the output of the previous task. If we go to the output of the previous execution, we can see that the value is in access token. We are going to copy this and paste it here. And that should be it. The source is configured, so let's go to the sync. I need to create a data set pointing to the data lake. I already have the link set for it configured. And the type should be binary. This is going to be the path and the file name. And that's all. It's time to test it. 
Let me show you first the data lake destination so that you can check that there's nothing there. I'll run the process. Ok, it's fine. Let's go now to the data leak. And here it is, the file exported directly from the SharePoint online site. This is the end of the video. I hope this content is useful for you. See you in the next clips.